Hello. Bam. Welcome to the Friday bean. Bean. Oh, I thought you. I thought we were doing like a bean. I said hello. You Question. said welcome to the Friday. I thought we were doing a back and uh, anyway. Happy Friday, guys. Um, we were not on point today. Not. On point. I've been tired. Have you guys been tired lately? Is it just an end of summer this thing? Crappy, super hot weather. I mean, uh, sure it's not a package. Okay. It's it's been so hot outside, and it's end of summer. I just feel sluggy. I, I know that once the cool weather, like waking up in the morning and that nice cool air, and you got your coffee, and the leaves are pretty. That's that's what I'm ready for. But um, today we're gonna be doing something that we did around this time last year, and you guys really enjoyed it. Yes. So we're dusting this topic off, and it. it it should be really fun. Basically, what we're going to do is you guys are going to make up random shops, just a random type of product, random brand name. I think last year we had Fancy Fences was one, um, and then Bubba's Balloons was another one. You get the point. You guys give us a weird brand name, and we are going to create an Etsy shop banner with the branding and everything in hopefully under five minutes for every single topic that you guys give us five minutes ish ish, <laughs> we, ish. Get, we got the adhds yeah just <laughs> well, we will do our best to try to stay in that five minutes but but the reason that we're doing this is to show you guys how easily you can create unique branding within canva because one of the things that i notice when it comes to etsy shops is a lot of the a lot of the banners that I see made in Canva, like they look really nice. I'll go to a shop and your banners will look really nice. But a lot of them look very similar. Raise your hand if you have some watercolor flowers in the corners of your banner. Raise your hand if you have a marble background with a cursive font on your banner. Raise your hand if you have cursive font kind of marbly watercolory background with some type of floral elements around the edges or some type of little swirly filigrees like i see a lot of the same and while that's not necessarily a bad thing when it looks professional it doesn't differentiate your brand very much from the crowd at all um and not only that i also see a lot of banners where Elements are not congru not congruent. That's not the word. They're not cohesive. They're not. Cohesive. They're. It's a lot of different styles put together into a banner to make up an image that isn't quite. It, it's a lot of things that don't match together. If that makes sense, it's a crisp, clear banner. It looks nice, but there are just different styles of things. Like the fonts look kind of weird with the graphics that you've chosen. Or, but anyway. With that being said, um, here in a few minutes, I'm going to have you guys give us some suggestions for funny brand names, and we are going to try to create those in Canva. A couple quick disclaimers before we get started. Um, first disclaimer is that we're doing this live, so we're going to be fumbling around, changing things, making mistakes, fixing things. That's how live demonstrations like these go. Um, this is this is for fun, but hopefully it also inspires you to get some ideas on how you can use Canva or even how you can freshen up your banners uh, in time for the holiday seasons. Um, second thing is that we're going to be using my real Canva account, keeping in mind that I run a lot of businesses um, and we are also right in the middle of working on a brand new Etsy shop, me and uh, Michelle Badger. She's the one who uh, did the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp. Uh, press releases for you guys if you attended that and you had a press release done she wrote those um she is the editor for my book the channel and she and i are also working on a bookish etsy shop right now where basically we are getting legal licensing from big authors in order to make licensed merchandise so that i can hopefully in the next few months make some videos about how to do that so that you guys can learn how to actually create some licensed products and be able to sell things with themes that you enjoy. Um, and, and what we're realizing through this process is that every single author is very, very different. So um, they all require different things. And I'm really excited to be able to talk about that. But with that in mind, you're probably going to see a lot of things on the back end of my Canva account. 
if you see anything related to books and and stuff like that just that's what that is so um i th- also small warning uh it's thunderstorming outside very badly small chance we might lose power and end up having the stream cut off just as a forewarning i need to go get some like actual water if you want to keep them entertained maybe read through some comments for a second I'm oh dying. Feel- also my- let us know how we sound new mic my water bottle's there if you want to grab that some water too I've got a water. I've got a Lacroix. Oh, okay. I thought you wanted mine. <laughs> um. So yeah, let us know how we sound today. Oof. Um. Mark got a boom mic, and it is up here above our heads. Um. As we've told you guys in the past, anytime we get monetization for this channel, we invest that back into the channel so that's why our camera is constantly looking better that's why our microphone occasionally sounds different um and we are soon going to be replacing this backdrop with something that feels a little bit more aesthetically pleasing so that's coming soon i did want to ask you guys before we got started um do you guys like the blue and red is this a good color for you guys because when we change our backdrop, I was thinking about changing the colors as well, but I feel like blue and red, you know, anytime you see like a movie poster, like think about like the 80s, you know, movie posters, they were always like half blue, half red. And that was kind of the vibe I was going for, but feel free to let me know if that's bothersome to anybody. All right, let's see. Nope here, but I need some help on mine. It just doesn't feel quite right, yeah. Let's see. Mine has my artwork on it. Yeah, I asked them if they like the blue and red. Using pictures of your product banner is a great way to continue advertising your listings. Um, I don't actually agree. <laughs> you don't need to advertise your listings when they're already in your shop. What are you advertising? <laughs> I, I'm actually a... I see banners that have product photos on them and they look good. But is it a great way to advertise your product listing? Well, advertising... Advertising is spreading brand awareness and trying to attract people to the platform in which you sell. Having products on your banner, you're not advertising because they're, your product, they're already in your shop. You've already achieved the goal of advertising there. Um, so don't think that that's a necessity. It, it's absolutely not necessary to have your products on your banner. And in fact, most of the bad banners I see have products on them because people will try to shove everything that they do onto that banner and it's not really necessary some of the best banners i've seen have no products on them so somebody said where do you get that backdrop it's not a backdrop it's a curtain it's a real curtain there's a room back there did you guys real this is a real guitar amp (laughs) there's there's a a cabinet but whatever there's a there's a there's a whole world back there it's a messy world it's a very messy world all uh, right. Blue and red is good. Maybe add a little gold. So t- somebody said brighter backdrop. It's lit about exactly where it needs to be before it starts to get overexposed for the color that is the the background. But blue, like a cyanish color with amber is the best for video because it brings out the best colors in the sensors in most cameras. Oh. And then doing natural like light bulbs and things in the background. That's that spicy real good. I like the blue and Oh, you look like you were about to do the floss. Oh my god, the Greek legs have been revealed. Oh yeah, he's got the Greek. They have You you gotta flex them legs someday. Yeah, one of these days I'll flex them for you. He's got uh, the thing is I don't want people to have to drive up their medical bills, calling ambulances, (laughs) He's while he's getting Canva set up, yeah, he's um I, I, I don't know how. No, I'm so fat. No, <laughs> you've been bigger. You've been, you've been. I've been much larger. You've yes. been much larger, and your legs don't get larger. They look, they look like one of those Greek statues. They're so muscular. There's not any fat on his legs. I don't understand it. It's not fair. Why can't, why can't, why, why can't my legs do that? I don't know. Chemicals in the water. The chemicals are turning my freaking legs muscular. <laughs> Right. Our, are you ready to get into canva i am ready did you want to not be on the main screen no first, there's or? nothing here that i uh, okay here we are yeah they're only gonna see the stuff for the friday bean and yada yada all right so when you are in canva if you want to make a perfect etsy shop banner 
first thing that you need to do is search for, you can go ahead and type in Etsy for me. Etsy. Etsy, banner, yeah. Etsy shop, banner, and Etsy shop cover. Um, ultimately, these are all going to give you the same thing other than your shop icon, which is gonna be the square. So let's just do Etsy banner. Alien said, my BF has skateboarder legs, biggest calf muscles I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't know where mine, I'm, my calves are probably at like 16. What? How did this, inches. how did y'all monopul monopulize? monopulize the chat with Mark's we're sleepy. legs? Um, so they have a lot of great ideas. Some of these are not Etsy shop banner size like these. These look more like Facebook cover uh, sizes. These are Etsy shop banner sizes here. Um, but the problem with these banners and using them is that everybody uses them. So uh -huh. you don't have a unique banner. Nope. Um, I recommend using them as a way to start. It's a great way to gather ideas to kind of, you know, give you a general idea if you hate starting from zero. There are a lot of really cool ones here. Um, but for the most part, I like starting at zero. So I'll go ahead and grab one of these and click customize the template. So here's an example. You can also scroll through and there's usually, you know, a couple different ones that you can click on and change your banner size. And one thing that I did want to mention is that when you are designing your Etsy shop banner, when you go to export it, um, if you have a Canva Pro subscription, this is why your banners always turn out so blurry. I see a lot of you guys that have really blurry banners. You download them at this size. With Canva Pro, you can pull this slider way over to make sure that you are exporting at maximum resolution. If not, uh, it looks like 3,750 by 900. Uh, 38, and you should be able to actually select this size or create this size on your own within the Canva home screen by, let's see, going in and clicking create a design and selecting custom size. Mm -hmm. So now for future people that are watching 10 years from now, there's a very good chance at some point Etsy will start to compress over resolution images. So if that happens, if you do this all the way up and it comes out super duper blurry when you upload it on Etsy, give it a couple hours because they might just be rendering some stuff on their end, but just back it off like two or three. Yeah. And then just keep going down until it looks clear. But start at the top. As of yeah. right now, I don't believe they do that, but they likely will in the future for the sake of saving space. Facebook does it with videos and images now, which is why if you look back at videos on Facebook from like 10 years ago, they are significantly more blurry than when you recorded them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start at zero. We're going to start from scratch, and I want you guys to go ahead and give us some names of an imaginary brand. Um, hopefully, the name kind of alludes to what it sells. These are completely imaginary, though. So go ahead, give us some ideas, anything you guys want, and we're going to try to create a professional branding, you know, banner. Um no matter how crazy your suggestions are. I, I really liked fancy fences. Baby drool dip, chocolate pumpkin, hummingbird. That's the second time you've commented baby drool dip, and I just have a feeling you want me to, like, AI that. Baby drool dip. That sounds gross. S sip and smile. Dolphin doodles. Greek, fat unicorn. Greek god leg -like care. All right, I like chocolate pumpkin. Tim's tin turkey tidbits. Oh, my God, I love that. Coffee with cats. I like the chocolate pumpkin. Let's let's play around with that. Let's do, let's see, recently used. Look at the popcorn. Swamp ape sweaters. Ugh. You guys are gross. <laughs> Why, are we... Why is everyone being gross? Let's, Bay's brass knuckles. Let's do, can you give me. Butt necklaces. Bro... You are five years old. <laughs> I love it. Rhonda. I love it. Um, dad bod data. I love that. Can you give me brown watercolor, which sounds really gross <laughs> with in the context of Are we your... doing butt necklaces? No. No brown watercolor, not brown water. <laughs> I stopped talk, typing to talk. Oh, okay. I thought you were just gonna search brown water. Overwhelmed mom club. Oh my god. I'm, oh, just a glass of wine and pretty curtains. Ooh, let's I know that that's odd. 
Which what? which business did you decide on? P- chocolate pumpkin. Chocolate pumpkin. I'm gonna put this. Let's see. Pumped up nuts. Was that a brand name? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I thought that you were just being obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in that kind of mood, sweetie. I thought that you That's, were... I'm gonna be like that on live stream. Come on. <laughs> All right. Um, can you Daddy's data center? Can you type in watercolor pumpkin? Loho. You can, dot pattern. Watercolor pumpkin. All right. Let's find one of these that looks. I actually kind of like this one because it's kind of lumpy looking. <laughs> actually, I do kind of like this one. I know that he's. Do it. He's he's kind of he's not a perfect pumpkin, and I want to make. No, well, that's that's what makes him perfect. I would like to adjust this. Shout and, out to all my lumpy pumpkins. Yeah, let's let's. Where's that lumpy pumpkin crew? Let's see. Right Tint, light, brightness. Let's make him look more brown. Can we get a more brown look to him? You're going to fade it too much into the background if you do too much. It is the exact color as the background right now. Well, I can adjust that, but I want him to look chocolatey. I want a nice... Saturate it. That makes yeah. him orange. No, that makes him chocolatey. Yeah, Cocoa beans are orangish. They're not, they're not brown. Yeah, there you go. And I kind of like him... Here, I'm actually going to turn him a little bit. I like it just kind of sitting on the stool. And no drop shadow. Doesn't need it when it's black. No, absolutely not. And then I'm actually going to fade this out just a little bit. Yeah, that way that kind of pops a little more. All right, now we need a chocolatey. need like a chocolate bar. Watercolor chocolate bar, like in this corner down here. Well, then, then it will be like his life size. Maybe like sitting beside it or like a chocolate chip. Can you do watercolor chocolate? Or it could be, it could be chocolates pumpkin, and it could be a chocolate bar with hands and legs, like hands on his hips, and it's a pumpkin, a chocolates pumpkin. You're running with this in a really weird direction. What am I doing? Chocolate. Oh, we're supposed to do this in five minutes, aren't we? Yeah, we are. That's why I'm trying to like. Spit. Oh, okay. What about what about these chocolates? I was thinking. But what of- is it? How are you going to incorporate that with the pumpkin? I don't know. It looks to, it's, it's 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 two it should be one element not two separate elements. That's why I suggested going with chocolate's pumpkin. Putting some hands and feet on a chocolate bar and doing chocolate's pumpkin. I kind of just like the pumpkin. Pumpkin's chocolates. Put arms and legs on the pumpkin. What if what if he's look, look here. That that just looks like it ate too much Taco Bell. <laughs> I don't, you don't like it? <gasps> what about the drippy chocolate? That one right there caught me. Scroll past that a little too fast and it looks inappropriate. Oh, does it? I See, like... now that's a, that's a dump. <laughs> You're right. That's a dump. That, that... Don't put a dump on your banner, guys. <laughs> it does kind of look like a poop. We're going to get so much hate in the comments for the, this episode. Oh, I don't care. We are not taking this episode seriously. I, I'm taking it very... It's art. You shouldn't take it seriously. <gasps> what about that? Uh, yeah, can you lighten it up just a little bit? Yeah, go into edit photo, adjust, let's... <laughs> Dragon House and pumpkin shitty chocolates. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? I'm ashamed of you all. I don't think you know what you're doing, do you? What do you mean you don't think... You don't I... know what you're doing? Just... Yeah, there you go. There. What did you do? Okay. You broke it. Now let's do chocolate... And then what I'm actually going to do. Is I'm y'all gonna, are so mature. Y'all, they, they, well, they don't. It's always the replay people. All right. Give me a P, just a P. Okay. And now give me, give me an umpkin. Umpkin. I'll give you an umpkin. <laughs> All right. We're so, getting demonetized. Let's see. Make the swirls his eyes like cocoa puffs. I don't want him to look demonic. I was going for like a, for like a, 
for like a uh... yeah this is this is very rustic i could see this shop selling like wicker stuff wicker remember during our our uh our target trip our tr target episode that we did the wicker all the wicker items mm -hmm. we kept saying wicker over and over Ooh, that's kind of cool what about put googly eyes on it see that's the thing about this logo is that for like christmas and thanksgiving and pretty much any holiday you can just leave the design exactly the same you could put a little santa hat on the pumpkin, you could put little, like, what am I trying to think of there? Anyway, turkey legs. Turkey legs? Yeah, you could put little turkey legs on it. Little walking turkey legs. You're tacky. You're tacky. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're, you're. You, you call have... me tacky? You ain't got no sense of style. You I'm have no here. good branding ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Tina said that font is the sex. I believe so, yes. Y'all is inappropriate. All of you. I didn't say it. All y'all. All y'all. All y'all is inappropriate. Okay. That's not the same color. I don't know. I kinda I kinda I'm kinda digging it. What do you guys think? Chocolate umpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get the the H like blended in with the top of that P there just out of curiosity? You can always undo it. Can I blend it? Yeah, can we just I mean I could move it in, but I think that it needs to be spaced a little bit. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe I maybe a little more just a, okay. No, no, okay. No, we need to Oh, it looks like drippy chocolate. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to get that perfect, but right there. No stop. Okay. Okay. See what I'm saying, dude? Okay. 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 See what I'm saying, my guy? Okay. We we needed more than five minutes for this masterpiece. Okay. Okay. And then we'll do the... Too much brown needs more orange hues, I think. Well, that you can decorate later on. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. Okay. And then... And then... And then I want you to search for... A really for... tacky picture of a necklace on the right-hand side. Drip. Shh. Oh, God. Yeah. Let's it. drip, and then can we change the color? No, can we change the color. This gets yeah. real inappropriate real fast. No, it's it's chocolate. It's a it's a chocolate, and then we will color swatch this, and then we will grab the same color, but we will lighten it just slightly. Yeah, yeah, looky there. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I don't. You're trying so hard. There we go. There you go. That top color doesn't match, but that's okay. It's close enough. Okay. I, 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 I honestly. I like it. What do you guys think? How was our first one? How'd we do? How long did that take? Did that take us 25 minutes? No. There's Probably no. took us about 15. All right. What do you guys think? What do you guys think for, for and a then quick... for, like, Santa hats. And for Christmas, you can just... That looks awful. That's not the I'm same style. I'm saying for Christmas... It's not the same style. You can do that. You gotta do watercolor one. Was it Jack O Lantern eyes? And for the ho for Halloween, you can stick some Jack O Lantern eyes on it if you can find them. All right, give us a give us a new one. Right, give us, give a... us a new one. I love it. Let's just add page. Yep, just add a page on there. Let's see. It makes me sad because I spent so much time trying this myself. You sell is, maybe, chocolate pumpkins? Maybe you just tried too hard. Let so, your let your creative brain come out and do it. Yeah, it's, do it in a good a good mind space. Yeah, like I'm definitely not a graphic designer or by any means, but I think that 
just kind of exploring what assets Canva has and playing with things and playing with different styles. Don't just set out to make yourself one banner. Sit and make a bunch of banners and then decide for yourself which one you like out of those. Sandworm carpet. Sandworm carpet. I don't think I'm going to be able to get any sandworms. Sandworm carpet. Dandy dudes. Dandy. I like dandy dudes. I like dandy dudes. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's. Uh, I like the I, militant badger. I like dandy. <laughs> I like dandy that. dudes. Dandy dudes. Um, give me a hipster. Yeah. Yeah. This is you. I actually really like that guy. This guy. Mm -hmm. All right. This is our guy. Okay, he's got a beer. He this, seems happy. And his name is Dandy. This is named Dandy Dan. This is Dandy Dan. Okay. And and you know what? You what? can get some like text with a little arrow that over here just says Dandy Dan with an <gasps> arrow pointing towards him. Dandy Dan. Oh, I love it. Okay, so we got Dandy Dan. And... Dandy dudes would be fun for a mustache care shop. Yeah, so let's do it like we're doing like like Dandy. facial. Is there any way, are there any letters that we could sub out for a mustache in dandy no. dudes? No. Just search mustache for me. Mustache. Mustache. All right. And then let's do. I know that's not the American spelling of it, but uh, that's what I prefer. All right. We'll put this over here for now. We'll save this for later. And that's then. the exact same one I used for my. Uh... For your channel. For my channel, yeah. All right, give me a dandy. Somebody said the U. D dandy. <laughs> dandy. And then give me a dudes. Okay. And then let's see. I'm trying to think. Do we want to leave the background white? Because his background, let's see, if we change it. Yeah, he's. Enough with the brown. No, I was just color changing it for the sake of seeing the the color. I don't like the gradient at all. Hey. You like the red? That's not red, that's orange, but This is red, my guy. This is orange. Yeah, you're right. Are there any of these that you like? Blue's not bad. What about No. Don't ever use dark, thick blue. Dark, thick blue. That's, uh, yeah, that's that color. It's thick blue. Do you like the red? <laughs> no. No, you don't like the red? No, I don't like the red at all. I like this blue. This blue? Yeah. I think I like this it's blue. It's a friendly, inviting color. I think I kind of want to... So you want gray? No. Undo what you just did. Right here. Oh, look how close I got. Okay, so let's find us orange dandy. See, I'm not crazy. That wasn't totally red. Dandy. That's the same font we just used. We need a font that feels dandy. That. D what you just landed on. This? That is, yes. That is something that would be like barbershop text. All right. Is that railway? No, it's Oswald. Oswald. Except it's bold. Cooper there we said go. use uh, plaid. Plaid. Actually, as a matter of fact. Plaid. You're going to give me this for a minute. Go away. <laughs> he wants to play now. I'm better at this than you. You're in fonts right now. I am. You need to go into elements. He doesn't know what he's doing, guys. <laughs> All right. And we want, I don't know if we want just straight red plaid. That might be a little much with this. Maybe I think the. I think get that kind of texture over there that covers our side. There is no way you're going to no. make that look like an S. That looks like a three. It does. It does look like a three. What if the brand was three dandy dudes? No, that's that's not bad. Especially if we were to like take and do this. But then it won't look like a mustache anymore. Sure it will. It'll just look like a weird sure S. It it'll look like a mustache. I don't think so. I'm gonna set off somebody's OCD by not making these exactly 90 degrees. I don't think so. 
Mandy dudes. No, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Let's see. I do kind of like this. It reminds me of like a pocket square See what type I'm saying? Thing. I don't know if that's quite the right color of plaid, but it's close. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was what I was going for was like a scarf. Yeah. Kind of texture. What if? What if? Especially what if? since it's semi-transparent and brings in the background colors. What if? Make the mustache an E. Make it the E. I... In dudes. Yeah, move. I'm doing something. I don't care what you're doing. I'm trying to change the color. Dandy duds. Dandy duds. You're changing the whole brand now. Yeah, well, you're not the only one that can brand things. Yes. It, it's, it's. I'm not going to get that to line up at all. But. You got to do the S as its own separate character set. I'm reading dandy duds. I still read dandy. Dandy dudes. I'm still seeing it as dandy dud. <laughs> I don't give a crap. It doesn't make the plaid in an angle instead of a plaid. Yeah, you're right. You mean That's... like? Yeah. Okay, I got it. It needs to go way further over that way, though. Keep going. There you go. Not quite all the way in the corner. Yeah, look at look at Tina for the win. Layers. Let's grab this. Oh, you can't change the color of the mustache. That's okay. That actually looks pretty cool having that a separate color like that because then you're. That brown is absolute booty. I don't like that brown at all. It's supposed to be red. I need to change it. Give me a minute. That's supposed to be red? The red that's in the plaid. And you're giving me crap over that red? It's the red that's in the plaid. No, I don't think it is. Let's see. All right. No, that's pretty sick. What do you guys think? Arrow? Oh, I would do the curved arrow. I would get rid of that and go into back into elements. No, we want this to be tacky. Ta Why do we want it to be tacky? How do I add text? You click text again. That's what I thought. Okay, that's not too bad. See what I'm saying? That's not too bad. Maybe like down here. I think it was perfect where I was and you ruined it. No, so thanks I didn't. for that. You I just didn't. gotta do everything your way, don't you? Yeah. I'm the control <laughs> freak. See, I like these arrows. Because you're tacky. I like an arrow like this. Like that. That's not it's I'm not shooting him in the neck. I'm showing you where to smooch him. What on his neck? On the nape, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna well, smooch give him, him? Give Dandy Dan a smooch on the neck. He kinda looks oh, like Oh, everybody you. likes a little smooch on the neck. Don't get it, don't lie. <laughs> We're all adults here. All right, rate this banner, guys. What do you think? Dandy Dudes. Well, what does Dandy Dudes even sell? I would prefer if the mustache was red, but we didn't choose an element that we could change the color Which on. is really strange because it's a single color element. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm reading Dandy Dudes as well. I don't care. It's Dandy Dudes. <laughs> could you try a red beard slash shirt? Yeah, if we could get him. Let me see. More color elemented in, but I don't know. I think if we... That's just the whole thing, dog. Yeah, you can only do the one element, actually. Yeah, having him like that off kind of blue Dark, color. Yeah, because it's almost the same color. Able to... You can't separate out his colors. Too green. Yeah. I, Too green. I like, Too sure. I liked it the way it was. Yeah, I didn't care for that. There we go. All right. Okay. Are we... Are we... Everybody was saying use... Or one person said use the duo tone. Okay, next. Let's do it. How long did that take us? About eight or nine minutes. Did it? We oh. Make the bottle red. The bottle was already in his hand, too. I can't... I can't change that. You can change the bottle. Can you? Yeah. Well, what are all the other colors? Uh, his glasses. Nope, maybe not. I don't know what that red is. It's not even, it doesn't exist. It's not a thing. No, Daddy Dad, no! 
All right, Tiny Doodles, Southern Grapevine. Okay, I like that. The All Southern right. Grapevine. All right, I've got it. I got it. I have the idea. I have the idea. I know what I I know what I want to do. Southern Grapevine. Um, let's do let's do a photo now. Give me a give me a uh uh give me vineyard. Give me vineyard. Vineyard. You ain't gonna get anything out of this that you're gonna be able to use. Vineyard. Watch me. You you say that now, and that just makes me even more determined. Southern Grapevine. That sound is that your actual brand name, or did you make that up? Let me know. That sounds like your actual. Because for liability purposes, uh, if you use this and it tanks your brand, it's not on us. No, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, that's awful. I'm just. You're bad at this. I'm just. You know I'm good at this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's actually not bad. Give me it's grapes. It's a little dark in the top, but. That's okay. Give me grapes. Grapes. Gw grapes. I thought grapes, and I typed a W. Grapes. Okay, and then I'm gonna add the grapes, but then I'm gonna give them a an effect that I hope will almost make them match with this particular member berries. Member. Let's see, I don't know if this is the one I want. I'm actually I kinda like well I these... kinda really I like the idea of making those little member berries, put little smiley faces on all of them. That would take a really long time though. You're you're messing up the idea. You're messing up the you're messing it up. You're messing everything up. <laughs> That's the and then I'm Maybe gonna, a little bit of whimsy is what make would make your life a little better. Maybe I'll up the temperature. Ah, uh, yes, orange grapes. Um, there's kind of like a an effect to the background, and I want it to have kind of. By the way, we're playing. I know that there's one really angry person sitting there behind their keyboard drafting up a 45 page document. Oh my god! I am to her. We are playing. This is how we play. You Relax. Guys, man, you guys, I get so exhausted by the comments when we are goofing. People just, they don't know. We call that a uh, double standard. Let's do, can you give me linen? How do you spell linen? Lin, not with two N's. E -N. <laughs> That's one of those words that you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um... What specifically? Were you looking for like something behind the grapes? No, I was hoping for something that I could that had a transparent background, almost like a square of it that I could use to. Hmm. Okay, let's let's go back to the drawing board here. Give me a big S, and give me an other. Okay, just so I can start to formulate Make your next banner. Mind your own biz, marriage counseling. <laughs> I love it. Coming to a town near you. And it's just a plain white banner with a man and a woman on either side flipping you off. <laughs> Let's see, Southern. What was it? Southern. Grape dudes. Grape dudes. Uh, Southern. Vineyard, grapevine, grapevine, grapevine. Yeah, grape, grape. Grapevine. Grapevine. All right, give me a G. Now give me the. Okay. I'm not gonna say the rest of it. Can you click in it? I can't yeah, type in it. I said. It. You almost said it. I did. <laughs> there we go. The thing is, they would have they would have known what I was trying to say, and no one would have gotten mad at me. But, oh no. I'm going to go ahead and lock that element. Grape dudes, all in all caps. It reminds me of the uh, whitest kids you know. Skit. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, yeah. We can't even say anything about it. Nope. But thumbs up in the in the chat if you know the whitest kids you know skit about grapes. Poor, poor Trevor Moore. Poor Trevor. You can't see that at all. I know. I'm going to I'm going to play around here with the. It's very drab. Very drab. Tina had a good point to lower the contrast on the grapes just a wee little bit. Well, let me let me let me let me finish my I need to find the perfect color here. 
<laughs> what do you guys think of this color? I feel, if I'm honest, that the plain color style text on top of a real background is very tacky. I really don't like it. Why don't you? But that's my opinion. Why don't you just shush? Shush your mouth. I'm just a good outline. I don't know. I think it's just tacky. This one is this one is difficult. I think it's just the background that I've selected that makes it difficult. I mean, I'm liking the direction it's going so far. I, there's no good way to tangle in this S and the G. <laughs> they said, in all fairness, it looks like most wine labels, so it fits. I agree. Darker letters is better. Grapes should be more drawing themed. Yeah, I agree. If we if we use some less realistic grapes to go along with the not realistic text, I think it would make the whole thing look a little less tacky. All right, well, then give me some grapes. You might even be good going with something like water. Color. Oh, wait, what about a wine? What about wine? Give me a wine instead of being so literal. What about like... Yeah, actually... What about like a... You can just straight get rid of those grapes, though. That's, that's stupid, yeah. Let's see if there's... I don't like that there's this bluish hue Why? in there. I don't know. Could even add I think like the style a... works, though. Can you change the color of that, though? No. Hmm. There's also... Could I try with... No, that don't look right. What about this one? And I like it. I actually like this. We're doing all the water what if colors. We did, what if we did different? Instead of trying to maximize our use of space here. I was going to get rid of that altogether. Whoa! Blown out. That almost got inappropriate. No, that's stupid. Yeah, I like I like getting yeah, yeah. And then let's I was thinking maybe we have some of it kind of cut off, you know, just at the perimeter. All right. It gives us a lot of dead space on the left, and you read left to right. You're right. This one, you know I think. What I'm saying? Yeah. This is one that we would probably have to play with for a while. I mean, and we could always just increase the overall size. Yeah. In order I'm not a to fan fill. of this one. I'm gonna be. Yeah. Real. I'm gonna be real. I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, I'm not either. Okay. What do you guys think? I don't... What does Southern Grapevine sell? That's true. That that's I mean a little bit of context because we were just going off a of wine. Nobody's selling wine on Etsy, so yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So what are we selling? What is Southern? I mean, it doesn't necessarily. Your name doesn't have to be associated with what you sell at right, all. Right, right. Obviously, put some grape leaves on it. Yeah, that could actually work. Like if we were doing, ooh, if we could do the text like it was a vine with little leaves coming off of it. Yeah. What if we did? What if, what if we faded out this background a little bit? And yes. Then, and then Good we, God, yes. And then we went in, and we could even change our background, like the shade to... Cork openers, grapevine le wreaths, wine accessories, wine labels. Okay. Wine glass charms, tumblers, drink accessories. Okay. There. Fading out that background made a huge difference. I like it. I think it's it's a lot better than it was. Yes. 
Eight. Okay. You ready to move on to the next yes. one? Yes. Okay. That probably not my favorite. Grape jelly. Are the stores already pre picked? Is that a word? What oh not no, these are fake these are fake shops. They're fake shops. We're not doing people's banners for them. Yeah, yeah. We're making the the chat is making up shops and we're showing you how easily you can create some banners in Canva. This just They sell hot steamy gossip. <laughs> hot steamy gossip. All right, give us another one. Give us a fun one. Give us something. No more butts and farts though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would uh, maybe if maybe like for a funny people say shop. dudes are inappropriate, but then we have an audience of like ninety percent women, and it's all butt and fart jokes. <laughs> and talking about your muscular legs. <laughs> oh goodness! Curl yeah. up with a nice glass of wine and a dirty book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I do. <laughs> Part party pickles. Party pickles. I like from Cooper, Cooper, Cooper Banana suggested like, party pickles. I like party pickles, and I like maybe they're, uh, maybe they sell like cocktail accessories. I and did not salts. think that's what you were gonna say. Anyway, cocktail accessories and salts and things, and the 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 cup could be like, like a whiskey glass glass like martini with pickles in it. I was thinking you know more like a pickle dressed up for a party with a little hat. Sure, whatever. Yeah. All right, give me a pickle. Let's see. Let's see what we can. <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> I walked right into that one. Yeah, you did. We got. We could do it cartoon style. Or oh, look at him. He's kind of blurry. Why is he blurry? We could do it cute, or we could do it with a real pickle, like a real photo of a pickle dressed up. Mark's calves. That's the shop name. Mark's calves and it's just little cows. It's like Mark standing next to a bunch of little cows. Let's see. Do you like the idea of using a real pickle or a cartoon pickle? <laughs> what? It's not an inappropriate question. This whole thing became inappropriate. Or is he playing pickleball? Shut up. <laughs> Mark hates pickleball. I don't hate pickleball. He just, he hates that pickleball became so popular. What about there. this pig with a pickle? What is that? I, I don't know. What is going on here? All right, give me a party hat. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Pickle needs a eye, got face. And then give me balloon letters. Balloon letters. Okay. Okay. We're we're on the right track here. Um, let's do I kinda like I actually kinda like these. Give me the rest of them. He doesn't like the dink as donks. He doesn't like the slunk as donks either. What are your what are y'all talking about now? What are you guys going on about really? We're down here in the cornfield, slinking doinks. I, I don't understand. I don't understand any of you. What I don't think you... anybody's going to understand half of these references, what but are... shout out to my people that do. What are you all doing to me right now? Party. I like I like this font. We'll change the, the... We'll change it in a minute. Party. Oh my God, I got to do pickle. Okay. P... Now we need an I. Make it a pickled pepper. Doesn't have to be just pickles that are at the party. I we need an angry pickled pepper in the in the corner pick. too. Yeah, I agree. What? Why? Y'all are messing everything up. Pick. Cool. Okay. Party pickle. Where's it? E. Where's it? E. E. Okay. Okay. For those of us in other places, what the f is pickleball? It's a it's old people tennis. I mean, it's it's tennis, but you get less violent. You you have you have a uh, you have a a big ping pong paddle. Girl, I know peppers can be pickled. What are you talking? What are you yelling for? What? Who's yelling? Is there an angry cucumber who doesn't like parties? Starla. What me? I don't like angry parties. pickle because it's salty. Do the pickle with the sunglasses. Yeah, he does need some sunglasses. Okay, there we go. What do you guys think? I thought you were just going to leave that. What do you mean, leave that? That purple. 
It's too much green. What? It's too much green? Why did you ungroup those? Because I thought you wanted me to change the color. Oh, no, I was messing with you. Oh, I never know with you. Okay. Party pickle. And then... Will you... You're not listening to anything anybody's saying. I'm, on, I'm in my own. They're not designing it. I'm designing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's getting the... Uh... I like his little eyes. He looks so excited. Okay, well, actually, now he's, he's kind of cute. I don't particularly like the... Well... Yeah, you do, actually. Well, you know... Angry Pepper... What? Because you did, because the pickled peppers are a thing too, so we're gonna add a pickled pepper. Who is the, the is that pepper? I don't know. We need a watercolor angry pepper. How do you look? He, he fits the theme. He's got an outline. Our pickle doesn't have an outline. He doesn't fit. He don't match. Yeah, but our letters have an outline. They have a shadow. Well, does this have editable colors? No. No, it doesn't. But this, he's got an outline too. Yeah, but he's got. Yes, but you, it's not going to eliminate his outline. I hate that so much. <laughs> I, you're messing up. He's the, he's, you're messing up my jive. He's the guy that's been in the bathroom with the fun powder the whole time tweaking out. I I think so. He's 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 special. Bumpity thighs. I like that as a bumpity thighs. Bumpity thighs as a brand. Yes. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Okay, let's see. The one below the salt looks be exactly. So no logo in the banner. What? I mean, kind that some of these I think kind of are logos. You got to consider we're working with with just a couple of elements. Right. If I was doing this for my own shop, I would probably take like forty five minutes to an hour at a minimum. Right. Right. We're kind of we're kind of working with what we got here. Um. You know, I actually kind of like this background that we have you going said, on. Use a, use a chili instead of an eye and pickle. A chili pepper. We we could do that. I actually like this being big and bold. Okay. So do I. What do you guys think about party pickle? No. I like the cartoon pepper. you are just hooked on the pepper wait that one that, one that one that one that one i don't know he's a pepper not a pickle so but he's a pickled pepper is he a pickled pepper he is pickled we could put a little arrow pointing to him that says pickled pepper <laughs> i like little arrows of words okay How are you changing the layer order on the left when you click um, on any element and you go into position, you have arrange, which is what most are set to by default, but you can switch over to layers to drag things around. I preferred the eye, but I will I will I will not be picky on the pickled peppers. All right, guys. I think that that I wanted to scoot them in a little bit closer there we go okay is it your parents mm -hmm. oh okay okay they're gonna bring Taylor home oh okay all right what do you guys think I I still I preferred the eye let me know the pepper looks like paprika from blues clues <laughs> it kind of uh, does doesn't it party uh, pickle Okay. A kitten. All right, we have about 35 minutes left. We should probably go ahead and switch to questions. Do you want to do one more? They said a, a kitty shop for bubbers. If, if you want to, go let's, ahead. Let's do one more, okay? We will do... As long as get power, power mission that, because we didn't get to do questions last week either. All right, cat. Got to hit enter. There you go. All right, let's find which one is bubbers. Oh, my God. That's so cute. Which one feels the most bubbers? Sorry, I was reading comments. 
We need a good bubby man. Bubby man, Mr. Mr. Man, gives him lots of ham. Oh my God, that fat sleepy one. Where? Down, down, dad. No, yeah, those. He's got nurples. Puppers has nurples. Your this cat's gray. Puppers is gray. No, he is not. He's gray. He's not even remotely gray. He is gray. He looks like this. Let me see. Oh, look, wait. Look at this end. And that one matches this one. They're the same okay. cat. So get rid of those in the middle. Ooh, I'm going to turn my volume off because that's going to drive me crazy. Okay. So let's do, and then we will flip here. I actually like this background color, even for the Bubby Man shop. I do too. Let's do, can you type in Horizon? Okay, let's see here. Make it be Sleepy Bub. Sleepy Bubs. Sleepy Bubs, cause I'm a sleepy boy. You guys are creating tongue twisters, that's fine. Party pickles, sleepy that's bubs. Making brands is is all about being creative, and that's our form of creativity. Being memorable. Mm-hmm. What specifically are you looking for? Because you've scrolled past about a thousand elements now. I know. I was trying. There's a specific horizon line I was looking for, but none of these are really. If you want a horizon line? I can type horizon line. There you go. Yeah, it's still not quite. Well, let me. See, Bubber's Blankets is one thing, but we don't need to put our, like, specific product in the title. If we do Sleepy Bubs, then the name is still related to sleeping. Maybe we make blankets. And then give me, give me a pillow. Now, if I was doing a, a theme for my pet, I would probably make my own. I was thinking, like... No. No, the blue actually looks good if you move him a little higher to the top. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get in, like, a sleepy-type element that isn't necessarily related to... We've almost got all... We could incorporate this into our logo. Yeah. Okay. I actually kind of like that dead in the center, and if we were to put the text over the middle of it, that could honestly be enough. Yeah, and we're we just could even... getting the text to be the. the eh. All right, give me a sleepy. Sleep, sleepy. All right, and. Bub, sleepy bubs. Okay, let's. Actually, yeah, that was that was a quick. Yeah, I kind of I kind of dig Sleepy it. Bubs. <laughs> yeah, I kind of dig that already. And then I'm going to fade this out. I'd say you best fix that text. OK, and then what is the darkest color on the kitty? Black. Eh. You don't like that? Mm -mm. It's too much of the same color. The whole thing is one color. What about like? That's actually not bad. I I like a light blue on on the kind of beige. Sleepy bubs. Yeah. What do you guys think? Make gold since there's gold in the stars on the right. Oh, there are some gold in the stars. Actually, instead of doing that, what if we switch the yellow elements to the blue while Bubby's eyes are? I was about to say no. I like the I like the gold stars on the right. It added a good balance. We did some effects.
I like yeah, it. That gives good vibes. I like it. It's cute. All right, guys. Um, again, this was just for fun. I just thought that it would be fun to do a, you know, a Canva banner tutorial because when we do our shop critiques, a lot of the times we see you guys and and they're the banners unimaginative unimaginative it's a lot of the templates that we see in canva used 100 percent with minimal editing to them and because of that i see a lot of the same banners on etsy over and over again and the purpose of today was to just kind of give you an idea of how you can use some of the elements within Canva mm -hmm. to create something that's completely different than anything else that anybody has. And when you rely only on those templates that we see in the Etsy banner section of Canva, what you end up with is something that isn't very unique, something that was probably, you know, created rather quickly by whoever created the template because they probably have a bunch of them. And the best templates that you're going to find in Canva are the ones that other sellers are going to be using as well, which doesn't help you to stand out, especially when they all look kind of similar. So have fun with Canva. Experiment a little bit. Play around. I recommend doing exactly what he and I did today. Create a bunch of different banners for your brand in all different styles and then go through and decide from there which one you like the best or post in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community down below and see if, you know, if the audience, if our if our alphas have a preference for the type of banner that you've created. If you're a Handmade Alpha Academy student, obviously you guys get to post in the student campus and you guys can incorporate in things like the brand psychology that we talk about um, in module two and three, I believe is where we talk about branding psychology. Um, and that can definitely help you as you're making decisions for the color palettes that you're using um, and the emotions that you want to trigger. But I know that this one was a little bit silly. It was a little bit fun. I just remember that last time we did this, you guys really seemed to enjoy it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as well. But um, <clears throat> if you guys have questions, feel free to let us know. We've got about uh, 30 minutes to answer whatever you guys have, whether it be about mm -hmm. Etsy banners and branding, it could be about anything. So, yeah. Miranda said, what I notice a lot in both alpha groups are POD sellers who are just lost. They want to do a shot, but don't know what their thing is. And the problem, it, <clears throat> and I've noticed that a lot too. It's, it's not just in our groups. It's kind yeah. of everywhere. And it's, it's because there's a lot of people who are interested in doing something artsy fartsy and they want to be self-sufficient and have their own business and they're just not maybe they're not super artistic or maybe they're not super business minded or their creativity is a is a one-way road because they like doing the, the art that they want to do and only that and they don't know how to incorporate that into a product that they can put on something there's a lot of different reasons but we're seeing that a lot on yeah. etsy in general which is fine i think that there's a big problem right now on youtube with a lot of youtubers saying that you don't have to be passionate about anything or have a niche to create a business whereas mm -hmm. you know even i'm going to be speaking uh on september 14th at printify amplified there is a link down below to register that is free um i'm going to be talking about the important of or importance of niching and that's one of the things that you know i've been working with printify on is how to get their sellers in the mindset of niches not just creating everything because we seldom see shops that are successful when they try to create a whole lot of everything and that doesn't mean only create shirts that's an industry that doesn't mean only create mugs that's an industry a niche is not an industry a niche is a specific style or type of product or aesthetic or theme that can be applied to lots of different types of products whether you know if you create handmade jewelry maybe your theme is that you do blown glass beads and you do necklaces and bracelets and earrings and you only use blown glass beads um, or you only create products that are blue that could be a theme mm -hmm. or you create boho products or you know you create products made out only out of seashells for POD, maybe you create a lot of different printed products, mugs, shirts, yada, yada, but they all have cats on them. Uh, for example, the shop that we're currently working on, um, a it's called a shop, oh, a shop of books and cold brews. <laughs> it's the shop that we're currently building with uh, Michelle, shop of books and cold brews. And um, that shop is only going to be bookish merch. So we have licensing agreements working with some of the biggest authors in the book talk and bookstagram community. And we're going to be creating uh, officially licensed merchandise for them. 
those are all going to follow the themes of popular books. And we're going to have lots of different products, but they're all going to be based on these books. So um, just, you know, make sure that when you are developing a brand, you have an idea of who your target customer is and what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. If you are just trying to throw out as many products as possible and you have no passion for it, it's going to be much, much harder for you to succeed. All right. We got Ugh. a couple questions. Itchy nose. Got that. How do you handle getting dreaded tasks done? Just got to do them. Um, get them done first. I've got some dreaded tasks that I'm working on right now. Um, the thing is, if you put all those tasks off until the last minute and do all of your like not so bad tasks first, it makes the dreaded tasks more dreaded. If you just get those out of the way first and leave the ones you're excited to do for later. Yep. Prioritize the things that you dread doing and get that stuff done immediately. <laughs> get it off your list. You'll feel so much better if you just get them done. I'm the same way, though. I procrastinate until the last minute when it comes to the things that I don't want to do. But by the time I'm done with them, I feel a lot better. So uh, I'm tempted to change my shop name. It just doesn't lend itself to any of the fun stuff you just did. Your shop doesn't have to necessarily be fun. Yeah, fun doesn't Excuse mean. Me. I mean, most of the suggestions that we pulled from the chat were kind of silly sounding. I picked the ones that sounded challenging um you know that didn't really allude to a specific type of product like dandy dudes you know that could have been anything but you know don't assume that your brand name needs to be fun if your brand is elegant it should have an elegant name tiffany and co tiffany and co does not sound fun it doesn't sound exciting but it sounds elegant and everybody knows what tiffany and co sells so is it okay to post a digital planner in three colors and in two languages with the flag of the country, which means six listings? Would those be considered duplicates? Do you think it would confuse shoppers? For example, one digital planner in pink, one in green, one in brown are the same German language with the German flag on the listing photo. I think you could get away with the same thing doing two listings, one German, one English, and then having the colors as, with a, variant, as a color with a variation. Yeah, it, uh, either way, <laughs> it doesn't even matter if you duplicate listings. You can have duplicate listings in a singular shop. There is nothing that, you know, in fact, we recommend doing that for testing purposes. You can do A-B split testing and, and have the same listings in, in the same shop. You just can't have the same listings in a bunch of different shops. Um, but I, I think that would be a great idea to experiment with, test it. Test it and see how it does. But if you're asking if there are any rules against it, no, not at all. Uh, oh. Do you have a product launch strategy available to get ready for the holidays? Uh, hey, Jim, uh, only in Handmade Alpha Academy. That is where we teach product launching. However, um, we will be doing a lot of different holiday-themed videos here on this channel leading up to the holiday season. Um, we will be hosting the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp in the fall, probably in October. And that is like, that is our more affordable holiday thing that we do every year. Um, well, every year, this is our only our second year doing it. Our students get it for free, but you can buy into it. I think day one, we charge $60, we do a discount. And then we up the price every day and we donate the overflow to charity. Um, but with that in mind, that might be a good idea if you need help with marketing. But when it comes to launching products, my biggest suggestion to everybody is to get the stuff listed as soon as possible. Um, we're already seeing the first initial or initial sales and searches for holiday themed products. If you go over to erank.com and you start looking at holiday themed keywords, they're already being searched for. So I would recommend just launching what you have. It can't sell if it's not listed. Uh, I signed up for an upcoming Michael's Maker Place. Do you guys have any inside information about on it? No. No. Um, the only thing that I can say is that when you compare it in, you know, Michael's to the sites tool in erank.com, you got to consider for one, Michael's is a U.S. market. <laughs> Etsy is an international market. You also have to consider the type of people who go to Michael's. Yeah, there are a lot of crafters, but most of them are going to be independent crafters. And then from within that category, there will be the ones that have their own businesses. So it all is going to depend on how much brand awareness uh, Michaels is going to be able to create. Totally experiment with it. If you got the invite, absolutely sign up for it. Do I think it's going to be the next Etsy? No, I do not. Because nobody has, even just like Amazon. Any of the, just like any of the other competitors that are popping up. And like you said, Go Am imagine. Amazon, Go Imagine, all these. You can use E-Rank's tool to show that they're not anywhere near as popular. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think a shop that sells digital products can sell real products too? Yeah. Absolutely. You just need to make sure that it's very clear which products are real and which products are digital if you're yeah. mixing them up. I sell products and digitals that go together, but I have separate shops for separate clients. Yeah. So making sure that your target audience is the same is also important. With the new Etsy photo listing size change, will videos change to square format as well? So I believe... I hope not. Let me go ahead and I will pull up... Videos, my... 16 by 9 should be the standard format for everything that everyone uses. And it drives me nuts that platforms try to do other things. Let Obviously, me... for mobile optimized, 16 by 9 isn't the best because that's holding your phone sideways, right? But So as of right now, I'm looking at a listing video right now. And the listing video... it's 9 by 16. Right, but the photos are all switched to square, on mobile at least. But the videos are look to stay in whatever... Mobile format. Yeah, they look to stay in whatever resolution you've you've uploaded. But that could change. Should we create different stores for different types of products, even if it's all POD, i.e. puzzles, bath products, wall art? It's not about the different types of products. Theme. Those are industries. You don't need to separate those out if there's an overarching theme. So think more about what's on those products. Are they all <laughs> for, you know, are they all designed with cat designs and cat themes and cat quotes? Those all fit together. Your industry is you know puzzles or mugs or pod you know whatever but your niche would then be cat designs so you don't need to split up different types of products those are not a niche those are an industry uh what sales opinions on adding promo codes information on etsy banners you totally can if you want to i'm a much bigger fan of creating an email list and then uh incentivizing them to join your email list by setting up an automatic discount code that goes out <laughs> um with an automated email that sends when they join which you're allowed to advertise on etsy because if they're already on your etsy listing and they see that they can save you know x percent by joining your email list on the thing that they're already planning on buying they're very likely to go ahead and sign up for that email list. And then you forever have their contact. That way, if anything ever happens to your Etsy shop, um, you already have their contact info. If you decide to sell somewhere else, you can start marketing to them and sending them to a different platform. Or um, if you're running a sale, for example, or you add new products, you can email them and let them know. I'm a big fan of email lists. Are Etsy ads worth it? Are there any good techniques? There yeah. aren't really any techniques to running... I mean, they're kind of ads, but... kind of are Etsy ads are worth it as much as going to the casino is worth it. Is it worth it to go to the casino for some people? Heck yeah, it is for others. No, there's a lot of things that contribute to the success of ads. Are your photos good? Well, if they're not, it doesn't matter how many people see them. They're not going to click on your listing if your photos aren't good. Yep. Is there demand for your product? Well, you could show that product to millions of people, but if nobody wants it, then they're not going to click on it even with that ad. True, true. If your SEO isn't good, well, then Etsy's not going to know who to show that ad to, and you're not going to be shown to the correct audiences for that ad to be successful. So ads are not a remedy for a bad listing. Um you, you have to have a product that is good. And a lot of these YouTubers right now are saying to put all your money into ads, advertise all of your listings. That's not the best strategy and it never has been. Um, Probably never will be. No. My biggest piece of advice that I always tell sellers is to identify what your best selling product is. If you're new, wait until you have a sure winner. That, that way you know that you're investing money into a listing that is already going to make a return on that investment. If it already does well on its own, then it's going to do even better with a little bit of ad revenue rather than putting money behind a product that you have no idea if people even want. So identify your best sellers and experiment with ads, but always be aware that ads are going to be a gamble. Um, don't put more money into ads than what you're making. And if it starts cutting into your profits, be prepared to pull those ads back and, and you know, be ready to experiment with different products as you're advertising because ads themselves are not the remedy. You have to have a good listing and it has to be a, a product that people want for those ads to be successful. I, I highly recommend um, avoiding those strategies where people say like, right when you launch your shop, put $100 every day into ads. It'll be worth it because it's not. We see so many people who blow through thousands of dollars in ads 
and they never make that money back because they don't have a product that people even want. So, uh, just attended a neurodiverse entrepreneur summit. Awesome. Interesting to see the opposite suggested having dessert first, start with a fun task, get the dopamine will help you get through <laughs> the rest. So it's, it blanketing all neurodivergency. And, and I hate the term neurodivergency because that causes people to kind of blanket behaviors all right. into one big lump. Neurodivergency covers a whole spectrum of different problems from like ADHD to anxiety disorders to all these different problems that people have. And the problem with that is that while some people do need that dopamine burst in order to get motivated to go do something. So maybe before you go to the gym, you watch videos of people that are more fit than you work out might work for you might give you a dopamine rush for some people might depress them it might make you depressed and might make you less motivated to go work out and not all of us work the same way so for somebody like me i have an actual anxiety disorder associated with change so i'm going to do tasks in the order that i deem them necessary from the moment i deem them necessary whereas other people need to get that tough task out of the way so they don't have a complete and total meltdown thinking about it all day so blanketing uh, you have to be able to figure out what works best for you and you're the only person that can, I mean, even with therapy, you're probably going to be the only person that can really suggest what you need to do for yourself. But again, if you're truly having like real problems, you should make sure that you're get like being seen by a medical professional as well. Right. And and your therapist will work you through suggestions that that might help you. They're going to say like, have you tried this? Okay, that doesn't work for you. Okay, understandable. <clears throat> let's maybe if that doesn't work let's try this let's try this so um not saying that you need therapy or anything i understand what you're saying no but i always recommend if you believe you do have some kind of actual neurodivergency and you're not just an easily distractible person which is a thing a lot of people think they have an actual neurodivergent issue when in reality they just don't focus very well that's also just a normal human thing I mean, yeah, um, when you're doing a boring task, I mean, it, exactly. Everybody hates to do a boring task. It, exactly. So if, if you think you do have an actual neurodivergency, you should probably speak to someone and make sure it's something that doesn't require medication, something that doesn't just an easy fix. Like my anxiety disorder is supposed to be something that goes away over time. It's not a chemical thing. It's a it's a habitual thing, but it hasn't. And working on it over time does make it better. And some disorders do work that way. So speak to a professional if you think you have an issue. Uh, I'm struggling with Canva lagging and freezing. What browser do you guys have? Any tips to improve it? I feel like I have tried everything. That sounds like your internet connection, unfortunately. Eh, not necessarily. Uh, it also depends. Browser can make a big difference. However, just the amount of RAM your computer has can make a big difference. Chrome absolutely eats RAM. And if you're using an older computer with like four gigs, my, I mean, my Chrome, if I, that's why I don't use Chrome anymore. It, Chrome on its own would eat up like four to six gigs just by itself. And that doesn't yeah. include your operating system and everything else. So I can't really tell you without being behind your computer to look at it, unfortunately. Yeah. And Canva does frequently have problems. It, it does frequently have like issues. They go down all the time. They do updates. If yeah. it's flat out not working for you, no matter what machine that you use, just Google, give it a couple hours. Google Canva down. The first link that pops up if you Google Canva down will tell you if Canva is down. So, yeah. Excuse me. How do you market slash build Instagram audience without feeling salesy? You're selling. You are selling something. Um, so don't be afraid to post about products. No. But also... Plan to create genuine engagement with your customers or your potential customers. Um, don't just say, here's a product, buy it, here's a link. Talk about what inspired that product. Show a little bit of behind the scenes. Show how you develop products. Um, show some, you know, some Instagram reels of you creating products. Do some Q&As up in your stories. Down below this video is my 30-day Instagram challenge. That is completely free. That comes with PDFs of a, a posting schedule if you want to take the challenge. But if you don't want to take the challenge, it also just comes with ideas for posts, stories, and reels. So if you have no idea what to post, that can give you a little bit of guidance on how you can come up with some really, really cool posts about your brand without it just being, you know, product, product, product. Uh... I'm doing a very small niche product and I get stuck with putting multiple options on one item or doing a new listing for every option. I can't put all the options on in one thumbnail, so I get stuck. 
I think it really just depends. I mean, th that is going to depend completely on what you're selling and how many variants it's going to create. Um, you don't need to put all of the variants on your thumbnail. You could just put something on there that says multiple options available, multiple colors available. Um, if it's going to create 6,000 listings in your shop, that might be cumb cumbersome and kind of expensive. Um, but there's no real right or wrong. It, it just depends on if you want them all grouped into one listing or if you want a little bit of listing diversity and, and branching those out. But it's going to depend completely on the product. So I would need more information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any TikTok, Instagram, shorts, ideas? I hate the way they do this now. For digital planners slash templates slash checklists besides screen recordings. Uh, yourself using them or some tips. You know, it doesn't need to just be reels about your product. Give uh, some tips for top 10 organization ideas, organization ideas for mom, how to plan your Monday, how to set up your planner uh, for the week, how to set up your planner for the month, how to set up your planner for August, how to set set up your planner for October. Planner setup videos are really popular. And I'm sure that digital planner setup videos are probably popular as well. How you set up your planner. Um, I think that there's a lot of different things that you could do. And it doesn't have to be you screen recording. It could be, you know, it could be a video of over your shoulder of you working on your planner, maybe on a tablet. Or, you know, like I said, you don't even need to associate it with your products. It could just be a way for you to connect with your target audience by giving them valuable tips. And then they start seeing posts about your planner as well. So there's a conversation going on talking about so husband and wife business. You can be more successful by creating separate stores, being able to focus on them. Something about, oh, where was it? Having three stores. That's a lot. Yeah. And Dragon House, is, they've been answering questions in here, but they said as long as you have an interest, there's a niche for the shop three is fine. It's a lot of work to be able to create system and processes along the way. Yeah. To be honest with you, I disagree. I think two sh three shops, especially if you're if you're just starting out, is too much. Yeah, you can't you can't focus on several different hobbies at the same time and make each one equally as success. It's better to focus on one get it to a point where it's comfortable and sustaining. It doesn't have to be financially sustainable, but it needs to be easily sustainable on your end, I think, before continuing on. If you're a husband-wife duo and you're both doing one each and you're not responsible for helping each other on their shops, two's probably okay, one for each person kind of thing, especially if you're not sharing products between the two shops, sharing advertising, that kind of thing. That's probably fine. But, or you're helping each other here and there in each other's individual shops. But know? I think as a beginner, three is just too much. I, th I think it's that, it's too much work. That is a lot. That is a lot. Make sure that, you know, you got to get a system down in place, a, a success system, so you can replicate that. It's, it's not that it's impossible, but you can see how many people struggle with just running one. And you have to consider, especially if not if they're not digital, how much scalability you will have if more than one of those shops get successful get successful yeah. maybe you get shouted out on on some abc network show right and, right and you explode you you never know so uh what browser do you use so i currently use opera gx i really wouldn't recommend it for like 90 percent of you just because a lot of the plugins and things you guys use don't particularly work yeah um Chrome is usually the way to go. It's the most user user friendly. I like Opera GX. If you know computers a little bit and you're willing to finagle with things to get things to work, it's to me is the best one. Can you mention where on Etsy you add a link for email sign up? Never quite sure what is the right way. Uh, your email list can go anywhere. Etsy says that we can put our email list in our shop. They do not care. Excuse me. As long as you can't go and you know buy products on a different platform on that page where you sign up, it's totally fine to link it. You can link it in your product descriptions. You can put the URL to it in one of your listing photos. You can put it in your shop announcement. You can put it down in your FAQ section. Um, you can you know put the URL as long as it's short. I would make sure it's something easy to type, but you could put it up in your banner. Um, you can really put it anywhere. There's no right or wrong. Etsy doesn't care. They they actually have a whole article on email list marketing. Uh, and this is the one that suggests yeah, talking yeah. about the neurodivergency. I wasn't I wasn't crapping on what you were saying. I'm just saying I think for 
general, most people should speak to a professional. And yeah. not, I mean, especially when it comes to things like seminars and stuff like that, because you never know the background that that person has. And while that technique works for some, it could absolutely flip somebody else's life upside down, trying, yeah. to, trying to push all of the important tasks back because you need a dopamine kick to get moving could get you more associated with doing the things that get you that dopamine instead of taking care of the important tasks that move you forward. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think everybody, everybody is completely different. Yeah. Everybody has different things. So it's, you know, and that, that I can see how that would work for a lot of people to get the chemicals rolling. Um, I, I completely understand. On digital, uh, can you do variants? It was asked related to an earlier question. I'm curious. I actually don't think that you can. I don't think that you can do digital variants now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I don't believe that you can. I've never sold digital. That's like the one thing that I've never done is digital products. Uh, I do have ADHD and I like those dopamine wins, which is why I brought it as an alternative to what you, I have ADHD too, which I yeah. actually didn't know until a few months ago when my parents told me that I was diagnosed at a young age and they just ignored the advice of my doctors. <laughs> Heck yeah. It, Untreated ADHD. It's okay, dear. It's, it's okay. That's I just I thought I was really bad at focusing for a really long time. Turns out I probably needed medicine. Let's see. Can't wait to join HAA in December. We can't wait to have you. Yes, HAA will be opening again uh, on December 1st. Okay, so. so I also have ADHD and focusing on one task is the hardest for me, plus the impulse control and hobby parkour. Bro, you don't hobby. even want to know about hobby parkour. Man. You he, don't even want to know. He's all over the place. I am everywhere all at once. That's he's, a movie, right? How late am I? I don't know. Five minutes. Uh, you said, ask anything. I'd love to know who's playing the piano on your intro in the Friday Bean. I need something like that for sleeping. It'd be uh, Ben Sound, I no. believe, right? No. no. I pay for a Storyblocks account, and, it's, Storyblocks. and it's, it is music that is meant to be licensed for videos, so I have no idea. I bought the song on Storyblocks. I'm actually, I'll be working on a, uh, I am working on an outro for the Friday Bean as well. I had a Jazzy Fusion one going, and then she's like, I want something more like the beginning of the Friday Bean. So I completely scrapped that idea and uh, am writing something a little less jazzy. Let's see. What do you put in emails for an email list? Biggest reason I haven't done one is because I have no idea what to put in them. What do you need to tell your audience? When you have new products, let them know. If you're running a sale, let them know. If you've got a product that you you know, has been sitting in your shop forever and you're ready to sell it, make an email about it. Do a product showcase where you say, hey, we've got, you know, I've got this. Um, there, There's a lot of different things that you can do. But with an email list, my biggest suggestion, rather than doing a weekly newsletter, nobody likes that. Make sure that you're telling your audience when there is something important that they should pay attention to. Sales, new products, or a product that you would like to shine a spotlight on. I think that those are all reasons that you could celebrate and send an email to your list. Mailing list sign up on the landing page. What if you have a navigation with a link to your own web shop, like Shopify or WooCommerce? Is that a no-no? So like if their email list isn't, like if you're doing a link tree, I'm assuming is what they're saying. Well, yeah, if there's like a, a link that takes them to... um, You're skirting that gray line real close, I think. It would only... It would only be an issue if somebody at Etsy deemed it an issue. I can't give you an answer. Yeah, because that, that's one of those like specific situations. Because if it went directly to your website and your website sold things, that would be a no-no. But a link that contains a link to that shop also, I mean, that's that's going to be one of those things that's extremely subjective to whoever is hitting you. So... I don't know. All we can do is interpret Etsy's rules, which state that you can't redirect a shopper to a platform where they can buy the product elsewhere. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that would fall in. But in all technicality, if you link someone to an email list and in your email list you send somebody to your website, that could be the same exact thing as having a link to a link tree that also links to your website. So, again, that's going to be up to the subjectivity of the person who is judging your case. Yeah. And I would always, uh, when it comes to Etsy, worst case scenario is usually the one you should plan for. Yeah. 
Uh, so I just started Etsy and I was selling on Insta and so far the only people who have bought from me on Etsy are existing customers. When do you think I'll get organic sales from Etsy that I didn't drive? There is no way for us to answer that. There's too many factors that, I mean, organic traffic, traffic that you haven't driven comes from SEO. So what you're really asking is, you know, is my SEO good? Because obviously there's demand for your products. It's, you need to identify where the snag is. And there's no way that I can do that for you. You've got to start looking at those keywords and make sure that people are actually searching for them. Um, you need to make sure that even if you you put you know the keywords into your listings a few months ago, are those keywords still working? Are they still being searched for? Um, down below, if you haven't already, my free Etsy SE Oodles toolbox, it's an SEO toolbox That will walk you through the process of how Etsy's algorithm works. It has a step-by-step guide to do Etsy SEO. Um, It has 30 days of E-Rank Pro. If you don't already, if you don't have a paid E-Rank account, you can't like stack the 30 days on top of an existing account, but that's included. And there's a bunch of different videos on how to assess the progress of your listings, how to check to see if the keywords that you're using are are still working. so I would recommend signing up for that if you haven't already. Someone said can't link outside Etsy. You can link your email list on Etsy. You can do that. Yes, you can. In fact, there is an entire article on Etsy about linking yes. your email list. She had said search piano music, YouTube, or other streaming service. I would be careful with that. Make sure that you're getting royalty free or well, paying for a license. They said to sleep too. There you go. I like rain sounds. We turn on. We turn on a black screen thunderstorm. On YouTube. Yeah, rain sounds. Oh, uh, try podcast too. I use a 10 hour brown noise track that I found for free. The brown note. Not the brown note. Not the brown note. That's like the what was it? What is he? A Korean guy who was sleeping in his in his bed doing one of the nighttime streams and someone was like, Hey, this thing, what's my current location? And he just woke up and was like, No. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, okay, that was I think that was it. Unless I missed one. No, I think we got it. If you're in the wedding industry, is it worth it to have an email list since they only need the products once? Yeah, because people plan their weddings months in ahead. And once they don't want your emails anymore, they will unsubscribe. I mean, some people plan their weddings years. What if they have a friend who's having a wedding and they're helping the person plan? Plan yeah. for everything with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. Where did you get those flowers that you had at your wedding? Hold on. I think I got an email list coupon. Right. Exactly. That's a great way to, you know, help with, you know, word of mouth. Um, I, I definitely think that it's worth it, especially if, you know, it's brides who are planning their weddings way in advance. You know, some people, some brides plan their weddings like five years out, you know? So yeah. It's like the guy that did my tattoo, man. They've been together for like 10 years and they just just now got married. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's been 10 years. I'm just talking out my butt, but I know it's been a, I think it's been like eight. Yeah. What about divorce, like 75% or something? See, that's the thing. Someone could be a wedding shop on one hand and a divorce shop on the other side. (laughs) You could could have a divorce collection in your wedding shop. Wedding didn't go as you planned. Husband slash wife being a piece of crap. Here's my products for that too. Call it nopes and nuptials. Product ideas, guys. Okay, (laughs) that's, that's, that's all we have time for today. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, just a heads up for the 208 of you who are still here. I do post a video every Tuesday. YouTube is going through a drought right now. It, I've noticed it with all of the big YouTubers. A lot of our videos just aren't getting the views that they normally do because it's end of summer. Um, yeah, people are doing their thing. It helps me so much when you guys watch my videos. So turn on a playlist while you're cleaning the house and just let them play because they help me so much. And sometimes just hearing some of that, you know, that advice. I've got holiday playlists from last year that you guys can start listening to now if you want to. Um, I'm already working on holiday videos this year. Please, this, the views. Give me views. The views, please. We don't need the views. It's um. Fine. This upcoming Tuesday's video is going to be about things you can learn from your competitors, things that you guys should be studying when it comes to your competitors. That's something that you guys have been asking for for a long time. So I finally decided to put it together. um, And that will talk about how to use E-Rank to kind of spy on your competitors and the things that you should be learning from them. So that one's going to be really fun. 
Also, I'm going to be speaking at Amplified by Printify, which is their first ever live summit. It is completely free. I don't know how much of this is going to be applicable to non-POD businesses, but I mean, even if you're not print on demand, if you want to come hear me talk, feel free to sign up for that. The link to it is down below. I'm going to be talking. Um, there's going to be, I think that there's like five other confirmed speakers. I haven't gotten 100% <laughs> clarity on what I'm talking about, but I believe that we're going to be discussing niches and the importance of niching, uh, even in a print on demand industry. So hopefully you guys can attend that and you don't have to be a Printify user to, to attend. It's, it's completely free. But guys, thanks so much for hanging out. New video Tuesday, new live stream next Friday, and check out the E-Rank live stream on Thursdays. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out, guys, and we'll we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Talking out my butt would have never been a good shop name. <laughs> Rhonda, you make I me love laugh. It.